Good morning. Hey guys, welcome to another episode. Today we're gonna be installing our cooling system on this nice, cool day. We've got some hot coffee and we've got all sorts of great, awesome new parts on the bench. We've got ourselves a new radiator, a cooling fan, a water tea, a new thermostat here. <clears throat> we've got our new switches, coolant overflow bottle. We've got all of our rubber hoses. We are all set to install our cooling system. And this is a 14 inch fan, if I remember correctly. Yes, 14. And this is, if I don't break it. And this is gonna be super awesome, brand new parts, all new pieces. And I'm really excited to get this in there. As you can tell, I got a little excited and had to look at it when I first got it, but it is a brand new radiator in there. So let's get these parts off the bench and into the car because I'm excited and we're gonna do this. We're that much closer to getting this thing fired up. So let's get this all installed. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is pull out our brand new radiator. I don't really wanna get a whole lot of stuff installed on the front of the engine until we get this in because um, this is gonna be stuff we're gonna run into and this is brand new and I don't wanna dent the fins or anything like that. So we're gonna take it out and it is nice. Uh, nice brand new radiator nice and clear all the fins are in awesome shape i can see you through the fins and i'm really excited for this you know we spent all that money and all this time getting this engine block completely clean um, inside and out and the last thing i want to do is reuse an old radiator and get all of those crystallized particles in and out throughout the entire thing and then have to do it all over so it only makes sense to start over all new pieces. So let's get this thing uh, slid in here and installed. So as we install this, we're gonna be nice and careful not to damage anything. And there are new rubber grommets that you want for here. There's one on each side that mount to the studs. Get some of this out of the way. And there is also a rubber arm that or there's a support down here and it has rubber on it so you want to make sure you have a nice new piece of that we're going to try and slowly get these onto the mounting studs we have a brand new fan switch this is our thermal switch for our fan if that makes any sense it's a switch that when it gets hot it grounds and when it grounds it turns on the fan to cool the radiator that's what i'm trying to say here but We've got a new one of these, um, brand new. I'll make sure to put a link in the description for all these parts that I'm using. That way you guys can have the same parts that I'm using because you know they work together. So we're gonna take it out of the packaging here. We have a nice crush washer that goes on here. And you do not wanna put thread tape on here. It'll uh, interrupt the ground signal. It's already got the correct pigtail to go to our connector down below. Now this actually goes into a hole at the very bottom, and I'll show you guys. It's gonna go right down here. This is on the driver's side. It goes in that slot. You wanna make sure you do not put thread tape because you need it to ground as soon as it gets hot enough. So we're gonna install that right here. We're gonna get that in there, and we'll be able to connect it down below. So the next part we're gonna be working on is gonna be right here where our coolant tee is. We're gonna install this, that way we can start getting hoses um, installed and then we'll be able to get our fan. Now we have our nice billet water tee here with a new gasket. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna install it. We're gonna put the um, temperature piece here on the bottom. And we're just gonna install it. All right, so we're gonna move on to our external thermostat. Now I'm running the factory external style thermostat. Now there is a debate between what's better external or the one that's internal um, right behind where our water tee is. And you could do it both ways, um, but this is the way that factory uh, Fiat made it was the external. Now the internal was for the super early years and just the back side of the engine has trouble keeping cool compared to the front. So their solution was something like this. So I'm gonna run it this way, you can do both ways, but this is how I'm gonna do it. All new hoses, and I'm gonna show you how to assemble it because it can be a little tricky sometimes. Um, so what we've got first is it's got it labeled. This is our upper radiator hose. So this comes from our radiator to our T, which is gonna be right here. So we can set that aside. 
So what we're gonna put together on the bench, because it's so much easier to do here than in the car, is our thermostat itself. So what I like to do is put it here with a center arm. We've got the, I wanna call it like a crown or a ridge facing down towards you. We've got this small arm with the skinnier part facing to your right. Now the smallest hose is what's gonna go here. We're gonna end up having to trim this just a little bit. And then this one is our top hose. So this one goes from the top. We're gonna put the label where the sticker is on top here, just like that. And we can always adjust it when we get there. And then this one is labeled our lower radiator hose. So you see it's got a very similar curve on both sides, so it really isn't direction sensitive. So we're gonna set this one in here. Get it all the way nice and tight. Just like that, just for now. And we're gonna be able to put our hose clamps on it through the front. But like I said, we gotta trim this one first. So we're gonna take off about half an inch because we want a little bit of clearance between our thermostat and the air boxes in the car. So we're gonna trim this um, as straight as possible. And we're gonna be able to slot it on here and get all of our clamps on. Then we can put it in the car with our upper hose. All right, so we went to the store, got our clamps. These are all installed. We also put in this 5 8 heater hose. Now we are bypassing our heater core, so we are not going into the heater core right now. So we're just gonna go straight down into the pipe here, which goes right back to the water pump. And we're gonna get a burping T. It's gonna be installed right here. And it's a little plastic. It's got a cap on it and you bleed air out of the system from this because it will be the highest point in the system. Now that's gonna come through the mail, so we've gotta wait a couple days, but we will be cutting this and inserting that T to, to bleed the system of all the air. We've also got this on the top of our, <clears throat> on the back here. And this normally goes up to the, the plate and then the plate back down to where there's a little fitting on the back side of there. You can see it right there. So it's normally how that works, but we are doing the block off. We're not gonna have this. It is notorious for leaking. So we're gonna skip this one and we're gonna go straight from here follow nice and tight along the side here, around the back, and connect down there. That way we can still get the coolant from the front to the back relatively easily. So we're gonna get that installed, fresh new clamps, all new hoses, let's get it in. All right, so we've got our nice new 14 inch fan. This is a really universal kit. They come with these like little zip tie pieces with a foam pad um, on the ends. And they've also got these black caps that you put through on and it squeezes it together. And on each one of these corners, there's these little tabs and you feed it through that tab and the fan goes on the back side, and you pull it through the front and you're all together. So I'm gonna do this really quick, get this installed and I'll show you guys what it looks like once it's all in. So we can see our fan is fully installed. You see all those zip ties kind of come all the way through up to the top there on these little plastic tabs, hold it down. We'll take some some snips here and we'll cut these excess off. But we've got clearance on everything underneath here, so it looks nice and clean. And you can see through the front where those little pads protect the radiator. Some up there. So it's installed and it covers the entire radiator, so we're not gonna have much problem when it comes to keeping this cool by any means. 
So the last thing to install is going to be our coolant overflow bottle. Brand new one, new cap and everything. And it mounts right here. I'm just waiting on the bracket that holds it to come in. That goes around the front. So that normally sits there. There's a bracket around it. Hose comes down around all the way up through here and hooks up here. So we're going to wait for that bracket to come in. But what we can do is we're going to fill this up and start testing for some leaks. So what I've got is a universal kind of kit here. It's a no mess spill kit. We're going to install a cap that fits our application. It'll work. Thank you. Helps if I do it correctly. Just like that. We're going to take this over here. Not with a leaf. Just like that. And we can start to put coolant in here and start seeing if we've got any leaks. So y'all keep an eye out. I'm going to start. So it looks like we've got a small leak right here. I've tightened up these nuts a little bit, but I think I might have tweaked the gasket in there as I went to go sit it down in there. So I'm going to drain a little bit out and get back underneath here and make sure I didn't roll that gasket and it's actually seated properly. But so far, that's the only thing that seems to be leaking. We got nothing else leaking at the bottom there, nothing here. These look good. All here looks good. Nothing leaking anywhere else. So I'll take a little spot right here. Fine with me. Because we seem to be doing just fine. All right, guys, the wind has really picked up on us now, but we've got everything sealed up and no leaks. No leaks. So we take a look. Everything is all good. Don't mind all the stuff on the bottom. There was a little bit of a spill. Don't mind it. And everything is good here. That's sealed up just fine. Uh, the gasket I was using was a little too thick. Um, so it was lifting the entire water neck up, creating a small gap. And that's why I kept leaking. I went to a thinner one and now we're all set, all situated in there. I did my best to burp the air out of the system that's here right now through our funnel that was here. The air came up through that since I was at the time the highest point. But when our water tea, our, our coolant tea gets here, we're gonna put it in line and do it one more time. The best thing to do is when this is running, get it hot enough to where the thermostat opens and then it really gets stuff circulating and really get those last bits of air through that high point in the back. We just gotta wait for that to get here. And then we can do it. And of course, we've gotta be running. But our radiator is in, all of our hoses are connected, there are no leaks, nothing like that. And so it's all set. Our radiator looks so good, all nice and black. Good to go, our nice big fan that's in here. We are in really good shape. This is a lot of small stuff, tedious stuff, but it's made a huge difference and we're that much closer to getting it running. All right guys, so it's been a couple days and we are working still on our cooling system. We have our coolant tea ordered. This is the part I use, this is the part number here on the top. It's the doorman part and this is what it looks like. It's just a little T here and two um, worm gear clamps to hold it on. So what I'm doing is I'm coming to the front and I'm taking the hose and I'm squeezing and I'm gonna start working the air through the system down up to bleed it through this here. And when we're done bleeding it, there's a cap that screws on and it keeps it nice and tight and can hold under pressure. So what I'm doing, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna push up on it. You'll see the fluid come to the top, but you'll see air bubbles, right? And then I'll let go of it. So I'm not trying to overflow it. I'm just trying to give the air a place to go so if I switch to the other hose on the exhaust side, you see the fluid come up. We also see those air bubbles come up. So all I'm doing is massaging it, working it, and getting the air out of the system. That way we don't have any hot spots. See those bubbles? So that's what we're working out right now. We're also gonna work through um, our hose here in the middle. Should have the same effect. And slowly start filling it up and make sure that we have all the bubbles out massage it all the way through all the hoses we can get to and massage those 
and get all the air out of the system. That way we have it completely solid. guys that's gonna be it for this episode you can see it's actually relatively simple to get our cooling system installed in our vintage fiat new radiator fan all new rubber hoses and selling that thermostat and even bleeding the system with that little t at the top of our heater hose connector in the back of the block there it's gonna take some time and you have to be patient and you're gonna have to bleed it again when the car gets running and we're not quite to that stage yet but once you get it running again have that cop the, the cap off and uh, let some of that air still escape. Now what I did also was I turned the water pump by hand um, so that way some of that air that gets trapped in those fins of the water pump escape and are able to bleed out through the top also. So don't be forget to do that. You can start your engine and get that bled out of that also. So with that guys, that's gonna be it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment. It really helps me out. I really do appreciate it. And until next time, we'll see ya.